This week on Life in the Carolinas. The brown mountain lights are there. There's no doubt in my mind. They're an elusive phenomenon, both baffling and intriguing. And after over a hundred years of sightings, there's still no agreement about exactly what they are. What is it? Coming up, it's the mystery of the Brown Mountain Lights. Closed caption brought to you in part by Moosehead Grill, home of Uncle Donnie's national award-winning wings. Life in the Carolinas is brought to you in HD by Hampton Inn and Suites at Phillips Place. Way out on old Linville Mountain Where the bear and the catamount reign there a strange ghostly light can be seen every night which no scientist or hunter can explain. For over a hundred years it's been the subject of songs and folk tales, of speculation and investigation. It's one of the Carolina's great unsolved mysteries, an unexplained phenomenon known around the world as the Brown Mountain Lights. At the 20 mile marker off Highway 181, not far from the city of Morganton is an overlook. It's a view worth stopping for any time of the day, but it's up here at night where visitors come hoping to catch a first-hand glimpse of these enigmatic illuminations. Ever since the first part of the last century, and possibly even before that, people have been reporting seeing strange lights up here. In September 1913, an article in the Charlotte Observer told of a mysterious light seen by members of the Morganton Fishing Club. The light would appear regularly over Brown Mountain and had been seen for over two years. Even after all that time, the cause of the light was, quote, still baffling all investigators. The mystery was such that Congressman E.Y. Webb requested the U.S. Geological Survey investigate the matter. Their 1913 study concluded the sightings had merely been train headlights seen in the distance, but that didn't sit well with people, especially when the sightings continued, even during a period following the Great Flood of 1916, when no trains were even running. This prompted North Carolina Senators Simmons and Overman to request another, more extensive investigation. This time, George Rogers Mansfield was sent in to conduct the survey. He took detailed measurements and readings from positions all over the area. But in the end, his conclusions were pretty much the same, attributing most of the lights he saw to cars, trains, stationary lights, and brush fires. You'd think that would be the end of this story, but it's not. Just down the hill in the city of Morganton, I attended the Brown Mountain Light Symposium. It's a place where people of all types gather to hear experts present their theories and eyewitnesses share first-hand accounts. The interest in the Brown Mountain Lights just grows and grows every day, every week. And we have literally hundreds if not thousands of people on weekends going up into the mountains to look for the lights. Even after 100 years, very reliable people are still reporting unexplained lights in the area of Brown Mountain. C.W. Smith and Les Burroughs spent decades working in law enforcement and investigation for the U.S. Forest Service. They were on duty together at Wiseman's View when C.W. saw his first Brown Mountain Light. I wasn't really interested that much in the Brown Mountain Lights. We was there responding to a call. I never really looked for the Brown Mountain Lights, but all of a sudden, Les and I both approximately the same time said, you see that light over there? And I said, yeah. I saw a actual light come up about 30 feet off the outcropping, and it just illuminated right there. A few seconds later, there was another one, and he said, that can't be anybody. And I said, no, where that's at, it can't be anybody. 
and it looked uh, like an indistinct candle. We knew where the location sat there was no way that it could be an individual. We just both knew we'd seen a light that we'd never seen before. And then it just diminished all the way down and went out. It kind of catches you by surprise and you, you're thinking, well, I'm not going to say anything about this because Les is going to think I'm a nut. During his time working the area, Les says he saw the lights on numerous occasions. I can remember being on a night hunting detail with wildlife officers. It was a very windy night and we were seeing lights passing over the car. And we thought it was a shooting star, and then we thought it was a meteor shower, and then we realized they don't really have that characteristic where uh, like a streak across the sky, they were literally coming over the trees and right across the top of the car. And we realized that was probably those lights being blown out of the gourd. It's the same physics to the edge of the observable. Dr. Daniel B. Caton is professor of physics and astronomy at Appalachian State University. He admits that when he first heard of the lights, he was a bit skeptical. And I got a lot of emails from people who claim to see the lights. And the particular ones that got me, pulled me back from cynicism were descriptions of very close encounters. I'm not looking out over the gorge a thousand feet, but looking 10 feet in the parking lot. You can confuse lots of things looking out across the gorge. In the parking lot, maybe not. These lights, they may sometimes move across the ridge, and at other times they float up into the air. Joshua P. Warren is an author and paranormal investigator. His fascination with the lights extends back to his childhood. When I was maybe about 12 or 13, my family took me and my sister up to the 181 Overlook one night, and that night, these bizarre red balls of illumination appeared twinkling on the mountain. And I can't say exactly to this day what I saw then, but it was enough to really inspire my curiosity. And as soon as I became old enough to drive at the age of 16, I was spending time in the Brown Mountain area. What do you say to those people who say there are no Brown Mountain lights? I can tell them they don't know what they're talking about because I've seen it and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, where I saw them, it couldn't have been anything else. Sorting out the bogeys is hard when 90% of the signal is bogeys. And Joshua Warren will tell you that too. You have to sort fact from fiction because it's also very easy to manufacture these things, fake photos and fake videos. But you believe the sightings are real? I believe that about five to 10% are. Any doubts yeah. at all that they exist? No, no, they they exist. Uh, I have no idea what they are, but uh, they they exist. Uh, I don't have any doubt that there are weird lights around Brown Mountain. So, if the Brown Mountain lights are real, what are they? I'm constantly doubting theories and explanations, including my own. When we come back, the theories, the evidence, and the ongoing debate. The Brown Mountain lights are there. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt that very reliable people are continuing to report seeing strange lights in the Brown Mountain area. But after a century, we're still left to wonder, what are they? I always thought that there were people much brighter than me who have looked at them and tried to figure out what they are. And if they don't know, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time trying to figure it out. I've always thought in my mind that they were some kind of rare gas or something coming out of the ground. I just think there's gases that are trapped in the earth and then when it rains really hard, it releases the gases. And that's where you see the lights. There are no lack of theories and opinions, ranging from the scientific the the to the paranormal. Uh, quartz is a piezoelectric material, which means that when you compress it or stretch it, it creates a strong electric field. And I think that with the magnetite and some of the decomposing magnetite creates some uh, sulfur oxides and the strong electric field from the contracting and expanding quartz ignites that. And I think it is a plasma. I still kind of like the, the part where there might be spirits walking around. My dad thinks it's four-wheelers. Everybody's got different stories. I've never seen them. Uh, we, we thought we did one time, and I'm, after I'm thinking back on I believe it might have been aircraft lights. So there's a lot of interesting theories as to what could cause them, but nobody knows for sure. 
And maybe it's better that we don't know. <laughs> Whatever they may be, the symposium is a place to hear a diversity of voices. One of those is that of author and paranormal investigator Joshua P. Warren. Over the years, you have everything from people talking about alien abductions and underground alien bases to underground military installations and all of these strange people observing the activity there. It's been on the X-Files. <laughs> so. Another distinct viewpoint is that held by Appalachian State Physics and Astronomy Professor Dr. Daniel B. Caton. The UFO people, they have their last line of defense is, well, it's physics we don't understand yet. I don't approach it, of course, from a paranormal viewpoint. And I'm not out to beat down the paranormal guys, but come on, you know, this is not E.T. Well, I think the Brown Mountain Lights themselves are technically paranormal. Some of the footage that we've gotten is completely inexplicable. We have put it through every test we've got. We cannot explain it. These men come at the subject from two very different directions but even they have a few places where they've reached similar conclusions. Josh, what do you think the Brown Mountain Lights really are? I think that most of the Brown Mountain Lights are a natural phenomenon similar to ball lightning. I have taken a wide variety of scientists with me, gathered their expertise, talked to a lot of witnesses. Surprisingly, Professor Caton also shares that opinion. I think the best theory right now is that they're ball lightning. Ball lightning are these little globs of glowing gas that appear maybe even indoors and they, they, they move freely sort of horizontally and they have time scales of seconds, tens of seconds and then they dissipate. And they also agree on one other thing. They are extremely rare. Um, I mean, I've been up there for 20 years and I think I've only seen what I would consider brown mountain lights about six times. So, you know, truly mysterious lights, which I think are real. I think there's a real signal there, uh, are much rarer, much rarer than, than you might believe. I've probably been at Wiseman's View and Table Rock uh, hundreds of times, if not thousands of times. And I can actually say I've only seen the Brown Mountain Lights, what I consider to be Brown Mountain Lights, two times. If it is ball lightning, what could be causing it? Josh has his theory. Brown Mountain is sort of a geological conduit for massive amounts of electricity traveling around our planet. Uh, our planet is kind of a big, dynamic electrical machine. It may be because of the special geology there. It seems to be a place, one of a handful of places on the planet, that is a very good conductor of this type of electrical power. Dr. Caton is a bit more cautious. If it is ball lightning, what is it about the Linville Gorge that, that preferentially creates it? Our approach is to develop some remote sensing cameras that will push images to the web uh, and we can watch them and uh, then correlate what we think are real lights with other phenomena like geomagnetic activity, solar activity, meteorological conditions, heck I don't know the tides. But even if the brown mountain lights are part of a natural phenomenon, I think they trigger a lot of very weird, even more paranormal stuff as sort of a byproduct. Wouldn't it be nice if we understood the brown mountain lights? I know exactly how a rainbow works. I know the refractive optics. I know the dispersion. But that doesn't make, mean that I don't enjoy a rainbow. We would like to contribute some, some understanding so that we can know when, when and where to look. When you have a mystery, like these lights that's been sitting there for at least 100 years. It becomes this blank slate upon which people can project their own dreams and visions. Whether you have a very scientific mindset and you want to come up with some intricate theory, or if you are a spiritualist and you're looking for evidence of ghosts, or if you're a UFO enthusiast and you want to believe that there are beings flying around, you can adapt this mystery into your particular area of interest. It's great that we have this mystery, but I think it eventually will be solved. And at that point, 
people will no longer be interested in guys like me. The real scientist will step in and say, we'll take it from here, thanks. When we come back, the search for evidence and what you can do to be a part of it. Many theories exist as to the exact cause of the Brown Mountain Lights. Some think there's a simple scientific explanation. Others are more open to the paranormal possibilities. And some believe there's nothing there at all, but a trick of the light and the human imagination. One thing is certain, solid photographic evidence would be a key step in explaining what they are. So I thought, I've got the capability and can spend the time I'm gonna go try to capture the lights. Charles Braswell is a professional photographer with years of experience photographing things that end up in the sky. He spent more than 12 years investigating the lights. In fact, he spent so much time at the Overlook, some of his friends began to get a little worried. He was sitting on the side of 181 in the dark at all times of day and night, we were concerned sometime about his mental state. <laughs> I started coming out to try to photograph the lights. I had looked around to see if I could find any photographs that existed of the lights, and I was coming up empty. I just wasn't finding any. Did you come out and look for the lights first without your camera, or did you always have your camera with you? I always had the camera with me. I usually had a still camera and a video camera set up side by side, each on tripods. Years of dedication and a little luck came together for Charles on October the 15th, 2001, when he captured what has become one of the best known photos of a brown mountain light. And the light just appeared here above the ridge and it was pretty bright as you can see. And it, it was rose, got a little dimmer as it came over and then it rose again and as it rose this time, it got very bright as it came across and then started dimming again as it started traveling horizontally from south to north. The light first showed up. Just Charles also showed me the video he captured, which helped me better understand the motion of the light in his time-exposed photograph. So that's, that's the same light that was in the picture. That's this the is just the video that goes light. with it. Based on his video, seen here, and on Charles' description, we created this simulation to illustrate in a few seconds the motion he observed and recorded with his still camera over a period of a minute and 45 seconds. Like I told you, the light was a round ball of light, but as it uh -huh. was photographed in the seal picture on a timed exposure, it's gonna actually paint a line of light everywhere uh -huh. where it travels. Right. I'm a very talkative person, and I'm constantly talking when I'm videotaping off. When that happened, it just was so mesmerizing. When I played the video back later, I hadn't said a word during the whole video. Charles collected his many years of research into a book detailing the various accounts about the Brown Mountain Lights, as well as his own experiences in getting his unique photo. Just tried to tell it kind of like a, yeah, I know it is. It took Charles countless hours over many years before luck allowed him to capture his iconic image but some are not so patient. This is Wiseman's view, and we're looking out over a nice area of the Linville Gorge. Lights have been seen here, so we're hoping to eventually, uh, we're hoping to have a camera here. For years, Dr. Caton wanted to get cameras permanently installed where the lights are most often seen, including here at the Highway 181 Overlook. Now, with the installation of two repurposed cameras, with one overlooking the Brown Mountain site, he's starting to make some progress. The thing we want is a, a constant view of the mountain, and so it, it's impractical for us to stare out all night, so we mounted uh, camera one, as we call it, up on the eve of the roof of this private residence. That has led to the first real imaging of Brown Mountain, sustained imaging uh, ever. Dan's camera one points at the north end of Brown Mountain, imaging roughly the same area you can see from the 181 Overlook. Our cameras take a sequence of digital images, and so there are individual frames uh, that you can uh, look at online in real time. Then we take those frames the next day and we build them into a time-lapse video, and that's what we post on YouTube. And so you can watch the, the night unfold in several minutes. You look at that to discover any interesting lights. 
Dan and his team have also done extensive testing to rule out possible misidentifications. They've cataloged everything from ATVs and flashlights to military aircraft doing flyovers. Some of our group has uh, hiked along the ridges. We've run ATVs, motorcycles, and hikers with various kinds of lights, and we've imaged those. So we know uh, what aren't the lights now. What we want to do is correlate the real light signal with something, and we don't know what the something is. A lot of effort has gone into getting the project this far, but there's still much more to be done. To do proper scientific research takes money, and uh, money for a project like this is hard to come by. We're hoping that crowdsource funding will provide new equipment and uh, maintenance. But there's more you can do to help. If in visiting the area you happen to catch sight of a truly unexplainable light, Dan would like to know about it, but he also needs to know more. If someone were to contact me um, about a reported light, I'm gonna know the date, the time, what they remember about the weather, what did the light do, what color was it, and where you see the lights. Do you see them below the horizon, against the face of the mountain, or do you see them above the horizon or right on the horizon? All of those details are important. So pay attention and take careful notes the next time you visit the area around Brown Mountain. It's an unexplained phenomenon hidden right here in our own backyard. The still unsolved mystery of the Brown Mountain Lights. Will we ever know the truth behind them?